Welcome back to AG2. My name is Chief Tyus here at the AG School. Today I want to focus on pivot tables. You can actually YouTube a pivot table and they'll show you all about it. But specifically I want to show you pivot tables with HR data and how understanding how our data is structured can greatly help you accomplish what it is that you're trying to get done. So jumping right into this, the first thing that you want to do in a pivot table is select everything. So I'm going to select everything on this brigade M toe. This is a completely fictional brigade. So once I've selected everything that I want included in my pivot table, I want to hit insert pivot table, click that, and then click the pivot table option. And it's going to say select the table arrange and you get the Vegas lights. So I've got everything highlighted that I want highlighted in this pivot table. And what this is saying is an authorization document, which is this here, column A through column H, row 1 through row 1855. Choose where you want the pivot table to be placed. I want it in a new worksheet. So when I click OK, now I get this screen. So now I'm into building my pivot table. Well, the first thing that I want to do is I want to drag authorized string because this is what I want to count. So these are values. And what I get is the sum of authorized strength is 4,616. Now some of you, when you do this, you may actually get a count of authorized string. So this tells me that there were 1854 rows, but I don't want that in M toes. I want the sum of the authorized string. If you're counting people or pivot table pivot pivot tabling people, then you want to count the names or the socials or whatever unique identifier you have. So for this instance, we got the sum of authorized string. And actually, I want to change that just to authorized string. Up, oh, it won't let me. Authorized string total. So, at this point, I can go ahead and start pivot tabling. And the cool thing about pivot tables is, is you can rearrange them and look at them differently until you get the data to lay out exactly the way you want it. So I'm going to put the unit names as rows. So now immediately I went from 1854 rows to a quick analyzation of what my organization looks like. And if I want the grades as columns, now I've got all of the grades, E3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way out. So real quickly, this allows me to look at the data and see if I can find any anything specific about the data that I want. So next order of business, if I want the grades over here on the rows, I can drag it down like that. It doesn't look very good. Or I can take the unit name and put it across the top. Also, that doesn't look very good. So if I want to take something out, like unit name, I can take it out by just dragging it over out of the row labels area. And now I can look at everything by grade. So I've got a problem here. Let's put the POSCO here. My problem is that the next thing that the sergeant major or someone's going to ask me about my information <clears throat> is that the E4s and the E3s need to be rolled up as skill level 1s. They don't want to look at them as separate E3 and E4. So for some people that's a problem. And what you can actually do, a couple of ways you can handle that, is you can copy all of this to a new spreadsheet and then just 
cause these two columns to sum up or you can fix it in the source which is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna fix it in the source so let's go back to the authorization document and what I need and this is key is understanding HR data we need an MPC military personnel class because really I need to be able to identify the officers from the enlisted and we can do that by doing what's called a left on the grade so from the left to that grade the first character has what I want or you could do text to columns and split that into after the first letter it's up to you but if I double click here I get a white square I don't want that one I want the black crosshair in the bottom right hand corner and double click it and then apply it to the entire spreadsheet so now I've got an MPC well the next thing that I need to do is I need to get a skill level and we'll just call it SL and if I'm trying to get a skill level on each individual then if I'm looking at this enlisted and this is all part of analyzing the data and understanding the data that's in front of you if I want a skill level there is one here in that five digit POSCO MOS there's a skill level he's a skill level four he's a skill level one there's a skill level two my only issue and concern is I've got to do something with these officers so if I'm just doing enlisted I can just fix the enlisted and keep going or I want to handle those officers also and I can do that with an if statement bear with me as I type through this formula but I want to say if this MPC equals an E so if it's enlisted then what I want you to do is literally take skill level oh, let's scroll back to the left here and get back on track I want to take the skill level and combine it with the middle of H2 we're going to go over to the fourth character and extract one character the value if it's false so if E2 is not an enlisted that means that it's an officer or a warrant if it's an officer or a warrant then all I want you to do is display whatever is in column F2 So that gives me skill level four. That gives me skill level five. That gives me O2. That gives me O3. Back to my skill levels. So now I can work with this data. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Let's refresh the data. And let's go back to our pivot table. And I'm going to refresh all and now you see I've got a skill level here and I've got an MPC here so now I can take grade out I can replace it with skill level or let's take the skill level out and I can break it down by MPC so now now that I've changed that I can quickly look at the organization in any way that I want to look at it officers warrants enlisted there's basically a brigade roll-up on the positions or I can drag the MOS in there and look at it as well so let's take the MPC out okay so let's put the unit name back 
here as a row. Let's take the POSCO out. And let's put the grades back in. Oh, not the grade. Let's go with skill level. So now what you can do is Funky trying to play around in here and do stuff with it. So at this point, you can just copy it. I can go to a new tab. I'm going to paste special, paste the values. And now at this point, I own the data. So I can do what I want to do with it, which means I can clean it up, put some cells around it, I can hide the officers if, that, if that's what I'm doing, just doing officers. And I can retype these names or short names or find and replace, whatever it is that I want to do. But now I can do what I want to do with the data and that's what I want to show you. You can also do the same with the people. But we're going to switch gears here over to a battalion MTO. So if you're in a battalion, you cannot pivot table your authorizations by company because an MTO is not broken down by company. It's at the alpha alpha level. That's all you get. The way that you know what company it is is by the paragraph. The paragraph tells you what company it is. So paragraph 100, anything with a 1 is HHC. And let me freeze this top pane, top row. Once I get here, paragraph, I got 300, and I got a paragraph 200. So what this tells me is, first sergeant, I have two of them so there's no company in the army with two first sergeants so what that tells me is that paragraph 200 means there are two companies that are identical to each other so that means Alpha and Bravo are paragraph 200 Charlie and Delta are paragraph 300 so there's two commanders so that's Charlie Company and Delta Company, Alpha Company and Bravo Company. So just a way of doing it is I could say unit HHC Alpha Company Bravo Company Charlie Company Delta Company. And when you're in FMS web, if you actually look at the narrative, it will tell you that two companies times, I mean, one company times two, or one company times three if it's light infantry. So the authorizations in an, in an HHC is anybody, any authorization that the paragraph starts with a one. And that's basically what I'm gonna tell Excel to count right here or some should I say so some if the range which is here so I'm looking in the range of column C for criteria of anything that starts with a 1 and the sum range is saying well what do you want to sum I want to sum column G and there are 197 people authorized in HHC and I can check that by doing a quick filter text filter begins with a one and the sum down here at the bottom tells me that it is a hundred and ninety seven when you sum the authorized strength for anybody in paragraph 100 so the way to get to Alpha and Bravo and bear with me because this can be confusing but if I drag that formula down 
and let's change it to not count paragraph 100 but paragraph 200 I get 270 and no company is 270 but we said that alpha company was actually two authorizations paragraph 200 was actually two companies so if I take that and do a divide by two there are 135 soldiers authorized in alpha company same for Bravo company and Charlie company will basically be this that starts with a three paragraph 300 and both companies are the same and I can test that there are 591 positions in an armor battalion so again you just have to be crafty about it knowing how to do pivot tables you still have to understand how our HR data is structured in the army and what it means to us so I've shown you how to break out your authorizations by company in a battalion or a method of doing it in a brigade where you can look at this information analyze it and get this information to your commanders so again I'll come back later and do a pivot table off of the people because that's got a whole nother dynamic to it and we'll discuss that later. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.